Misty Quentin Paranormal Group. Today I have all of the ghost hunting equipment. So Jessica is about to go on vacation for about a week. And so before she did that, hi Kina. Whoa! Do you want to be involved? Please don't set yourself on fire again. Okay? Smoke machine. Okay, so Jessica left me with all of her equipment, her entire beautiful pelican box case. She got it for Christmas from her husband, Mike. Hey, long time no see. We love him, so that's fantastic. Anyway, getting back to the purpose of this video. So, Jessica left me with her ghost hunting equipment right before she's about to go on vacation, and I wanted to make a quick video about the basic ghost hunting equipment that every beginner should have. So everything that I'm about to show you can be purchased online from either ghoststop.com, which we highly recommend because you get the points, or Amazon, eBay, you can buy them used, which I'm a huge advocate for buying things used in general. So whatever fits your budget, whatever works for you, that's what you go for. Dogs are barking. Hold on. This is a very Michigan thing to have in the background here. So today I wanted to make a video about a few items that beginner ghost hunters can add to their arsenal to get some really fantastic evidence right out of the gate without much experience. Now none of these things are dangerous, we're not talking about Ouija boards or anything like that today. These are very co either common or some of these things you might even have around your house already or some of the things to make these things. So let's take a look. So the first piece of equipment, and in my opinion, the most important piece of equipment in a ghost hunter's arsenal is a digital voice recorder. Now you can pick one of these up pretty cheaply uh, for less than $100. There's even some for like $20, $30. This one I believe was $49.99 at Best Buy. So this is Jessica's. I have the exact same one. And this is the device that we've been able to capture a couple EVPs out of thin air. This is a Sony version, and I will put the link in the description to this exact recorder so you can take a look at it for yourself. But any recorder, even on your phone, is perfectly good. It's anything that can record sound. So this is arguably the most important and most basic tool in your ghost hunting kit. Certain people are married to certain recorders and whether or not, you know, that recorder is the be all end all really depends on the person. So for me, this, you know, this is it for me. I'm happy with this one. We've had a lot of really great results with it. And so this is my recorder. In my opinion, we kind of get into this murky zone here where, you know, the more modern recorders are designed to eliminate all of the excess noise possible, produce the clearest audio files possible. And the best part of this is it's got a little USB port. So you can plug it right into your computer. You can stay on the field, you can listen to it, it's got a built-in speaker, all of it. So it's, it's, this is a really great first addition to your ghost hunting arsenal. The next piece of equipment that I would highly recommend for our beginner ghost hunters and I think is kind of an essential and one device that we've really enjoyed using and relied on very heavily for a couple reasons. This is the K2 EMF meter. And it turns on using this button here. And because I've got all this lighting on and these cameras, it is gonna go bananas. So, I've also got this fun, oh shoot. The whole time. Okay, so you see when I turn my heater off, it's back to normal. So it's not the camera, it's the heater. Notice certain things refrigerate. One thing that's important too to note with these devices is to always take a base reading. So there are any number of things right now, given the fact I have all this lighting and equipment, there's any number of things that could be triggering this right now. If there was to be like a significant spike, that might be, and I'm having a hard time not w looking at the camera and like watching it in the viewfinder, I apologize. It's making its clicking noise. Let me see, maybe I'll just put the head. <laughs> so I just kind of went around the basement here and just did kind of like a base reading, just because I've always been curious to like, are there any like 
There are times where I pick it up and it just won't stop going off too, so I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's... So when you go to use this, make sure you kind of like, you stop in a spot or you use it in a spot where you've kind of checked around. Make sure that there's no fish tanks or Wi-Fi, wi excuse me, Wi-Fi routers. The Wi-Fi router makes it go crazy. So I'm just gonna sit it back here and kind of just keep my ears out, I suppose. So the next piece of equipment that we highly recommend is the PSB7 Spirit Box. Now this can be purchased from Ghost Stop as well. Link in the description for this one too. This is the kind of like market product um, comparable to the Radio Shack Spirit Box hacks that a lot of people have made over the years. So this is a AM FM sweeping radio see if I can get this to focus. So this is a device that is marketed towards people looking to communicate with spirits or other entities using a radio sweep spirit box. So this one turns on and it does have a built-in speaker, but it's extremely difficult to hear. The sound does come out of the back right here. That's where the speaker's at. So it is kind of difficult to hear and the speaker that comes with it isn't really great either so what we like to do is hook it up to the amplifier we use with our mystic mini portal and instead of having any of the guitar pedals on we just let it use the amplifier just for that purpose amplification so we just kind of let it come out and it makes it easier to hear so let me give you an idea of what it sounds like we'll turn it on this is the sweet function and I mean, you could hold it up to your ear like this and listen, and that might make it a little easier. So another great tool, another great, very basic tool that is fantastic for beginners or anybody who's looking into getting into ghost hunting. So, and it's not too expensive either. Um, of course, the market price for radios that are hackable, or at least on the list that people know how to do those hacks, the price has been driven up. So either way, you can save yourself a couple bucks by finding a radio. If you have one available to you, you can track one down on eBay and um, clipping a few wires or maybe soldering a little bit, or you can purchase this one from Ghost Up, which is essentially the same thing. So another piece of essential equipment for beginner ghost hunters and anybody looking to get into paranormal investigation is a flashlight. Ooh, look at what that does. Ooh, that's exciting. Okay, so a flashlight. Now, while this might seem like a very basic and juvenile tool, it's actually quite useful. So this one is great for seeing in the dark, obviously, but if you get the mag light, mag light, this, the mag light is this little guy's big old cousin. And what people are able to do with this one is use it as not only a device for navigating the dark, but a device to trigger during communication. And you can twist the battery cap to a point where it's loose enough that the batteries still maintain contact so that the slightest touch can set it off. So see, okay, so when I touch the back of it, so when you push on this, then even the slightest movement turns it on and off. So you could set this up on an investigation and ask Spirit to manipulate this in some way. Now my batteries are so low and this is so bad, right? Just by touching it, you're able to shut it on and off. Arguably then a Spirit would be able to influence it with limited physical contact so anyway so the mag light is another great addition to any beginner's ghost hunting arsenal oh okay so the last piece of equipment and i tried to focus on very accessible products or accessible pieces of technology or equipment for this video because i want there to be like, okay, like when I first got into validating my paranormal and psychic experiences with technology, I thought I needed all kinds of stuff and I was not able to sleep at night if there was some toy and gadget that I didn't have. 
<laughs> and couldn't get. And so that inspired me to really start to understand, uh, you know, after a couple disappointing purchases, to be completely honest, it kind of inspired me to understand how everything works, what the insides kind of look like, whether or not that's a tool that given the way that we investigate is really going to be useful for us or me. So I just want you to focus on the basics in the beginning. You don't need all the fancy stuff. You don't need the stuff that goes beep, boop, boop, beep and does all kinds of colors. You don't need that stuff. You can collect very compelling paranormal evidence with extremely basic stuff and that's kind of the purpose of this video. That's why I wanted to sit down and film this and kind of show you my favorite things and hopefully inspire you to create a lot of these things on your own or uh, use things around your home and stuff that you might already have or at least not break the bank in trying to acquire some of these tools. The final thing I'm going to talk about today is dowsing rods. So these are Jessica's dowsing rods. Now we used these in one of our most recent videos. Got any questions? Which way does F you mean? No, I'm just kidding. That one, I guess. <laughs> and it was my first time actually using these. So what these are, it's a couple pieces of copper tubing. There is this kind of shaft that holds the rod that's suspended, which the inside is a piece of copper tubing, and the outside is wrapped in just all these pieces of leather. So like just... And this is kind of an aesthetic choice. You could wrap this if you were gonna try and make your own. You could cover them with fabric. You could probably even leave them as is too. But the main feature of these rods is this kind of stopper here that's been created by this balling up of this same leather material. So this holds this in place. So when you're holding it, the rod's able to kind of move freely. And it also kind of gives it this resting point here too, which is great because when it swings, it's a little more difficult to influence with your micro movement. So like I got to kind of really, ooh, I'm going to whack myself in the head. Got to really, oh, did it. Got to get, get my, you know, get, get a good swing on it to get it moving, but it also helps keep them very still. So with dowsing rods and any of these tools where you're holding them, like pendulum, some Ouija boards and things like that, you really have to be kind of aware of who you're doing it with and be honest with yourself about whether or not you're influencing it. But I have seen and experienced even some very compelling moments where I can't explain why they're moving. Keep going. They have to cross. Good. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> and these are quite fun. So these are very easy to make yourself and I think I'm going to make a video where I make my own set of these. So when that is done I will link that in the description you can check that out too. Because this is one, two, three, about three different, three different parts. And then it's really just assembling it so pretty easy. So the way you use these is you hold them and you find kind of like a, a good, right? And then you ask them to cross. And now I'm going to move them for demonstration purposes, but so then the idea is they're supposed to cross. And wiggle. So if you don't want to make them yourself though, you can absolutely buy them. Jessica bought these at a convention. I'm sure they're available on Etsy, eBay, etc. So don't feel like you have to DIY them if that's something that you're not interested in doing because everything you do in the paranormal should be fun and exciting and experimental. So go for it. So hopefully after watching this video, you are inspired to dig around your house or your room or go out and buy a couple really basic things. Please don't break the bank. Please don't blame me for spending all your money on ghost hunting equipment. It's a slippery and addicting slope. It happens fast. I speak from experience. So I hope this video has inspired you to test out a few pieces of very basic equipment for yourself and get out there and start exploring. This leads us to the question of the day. What's your favorite tool? Let us know down here. Please make sure to check out the other videos on our channel. We have some very exciting investigations, EVPs, and some strange apparitions. And if you feel so compelled, please subscribe for more videos like this, investigations, and all of the other stuff we have planned for 2019. So until next time, I'm Hillary and I will see you later. Mm -hmm.